The penultimate round of the 2017 Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship in partnership with Toyo Tyres takes place at Blyton Park Driving Centre in Lincolnshire. The second visit of the year to the Lincolnshire venue by the Championship and a cracking field of well over 70 cars here to do battle on this short but tight and tricky circuit. Cars of all ages are here once again from the most modern and powerful rallycross machines down to classic escorts and fiestas in the historic series. Let's take a lap on board with Dan Beatty in his Subaru of Blyton Park Driving Centre's rallycross circuits. Nice fast pace start on the tarmac leading up into the opening run, simply gentle left-hander, a long corner this one before heading out towards the loose section through a tight left-hander across the second tarmac section then straight on towards the rather sandy infield, plenty of dust being thrown up here, also the sun causing the drivers a slight issue today. Then it's through into the first of the tight right-handed hairpins heading onto the infield up towards the famous jump section here at Blyton through this long left-handed corner into the jump. Not much of a run-up, so uh, not too much chance of seeing cars take off today. Then it's through into the chicane, back onto the tarmac. Mind those marker blocks as you come through towards the second half of the lap, then into a long double or even triple left-hander. Back through the tarmac section and up to the final right-handed corner to complete the lap. All the race is over five laps today. Thanks to Dan Beatty for taking us round on a quick tour of Blyton. We begin the race action then with the A final of the Root Contracts Junior Rallycross category. Three different heat winners today. Tom Constantine won the first heat in his Suzuki Swift. The second went to Jaden Bennett in the Seat Arosa. The third to Morgan Root in his Suzuki Swift. But Morgan Root's made uh, not the best of starts there. And it's Jaden Bennett in the little Seat Arosa who leads the way around the first lap. Into the first left-hander, he leads Tom Constantine in the black and red Suzuki Swift, it's his cousin James Constantine up into third place in the green car and Morgan Root at the back, you can see the dust flying as they head onto the infield for the first time, a bit of a bash there, I think Tom Constantine was slightly blinded by the dust there and just clipped the back of uh, Jaden Bennett as they head round the left-hander up towards the jump, Jaden Bennett in his first season of Rallycross and he was the winner here at Blyton of the A-Final for the Juniors earlier this season his first ever Rallycross event, they head through the chicane there, you don't want to clip those marker blocks or indeed the cones, then into this long section of left-handers, two or three apexes there as you head out towards the end of the lap, James Constantine coming under pressure from Morgan Roots for third place, James the only driver not to win a heat in the qualifying section of this meeting. Every driver got three heats to uh, qualify for a grid position for the finals. Four juniors into their second lap now. Jaden Bennett leads the way. Morgan Root about to make a move for third place. He's up the inside as they come out of the second turn there, and he's into third position. So Morgan Root up to third, but the two leaders have got away. And it is uh, Tom Constantine who's recorded the fastest lap. One minute 8.453 on the first lap. Just beginning to fly as they head over the infield but dry day here in Lincolnshire. Up and over the jump they come. Making a slightly wide line there, Jaden Bennett. It's a pretty windy day. You can see the uh, marker tape blowing about there. That doesn't help visibility here with the dust blowing around. Towards the end of the second lap then. It's still Jaden Bennett with the lead ahead of Tom Constantine. We'll see what the gap is at the end of this lap. Constantine closing up slightly. The other two cars have dropped back. There's Morgan Roots in third place into the third of the five laps they go then the uh, Root Contracts Junior Rallycross A final Tom Constantine may be poised here to make a move his lead was uh, well the gap to the leader was 1.2 seconds at the end of that lap but they're well clear four seconds clear of Morgan Root now around the left-handed hairpin up towards the infield section Morgan Root with the quickest time on that second lap, 1 minute 7.579, so he's trying to close in on our two leaders. We go through the right-handed hairpin, over the rather sandy surface there at this Blyton Park driving centre. All manner of different uh, motorsport activities take place here across the year, as well as rallycross. There's uh, auto tests, rallies, track days, and plenty more. A lot of... Uh, test sessions for the likes of uh, Autocar and Evo magazine take place here as well. Two 
leaders nose to tail now as they come out and uh, Tom Constantine got a wheel onto the grass there coming out of the left-hander towards the end of lap number three still Jaden Bennett the little Seat Arosa the Grand Auto Services sponsored car who continues to lead down towards the first corner once again there's less than half a second in it now Tom Constantine has really closed up and Morgan Root not far behind now either James Constantine over four seconds further back the only driver not to win a heat today in a very evenly matched field in the juniors today still Tom Constantine not able to make a move on the only non-Suzuki in the field that's of Jaden Bennett locked up a little there coming through the hairpin Morgan Roots closed up on them as well he's right with almost right with the leaders now as they come through the left-hander into the jump the Royal Purple sponsored car of Tom Constantine gets a face full of dust through there Morgan Root is closing up on them the three heat winners almost nose to tail now they're coming round to start the final lap this time can the Seat hang on for what I think will be his third round win of the season Jaden Bennett fighting Tom Constantine for the title it's Tom's second season in rallycross all these racers are under 17 years of age on their way through this tight tarmac section at the end of the fourth lap can Tom make a move this time on Jaden Bennett for the lead again less than half a second in it with Morgan Root eight tenths of a second further back Tom Constantine has a look he had to bob back in to avoid hitting the back of Jaden Bennett there has that lost him his chance he's lost momentum he could lose second place they nearly collect a bit of marker tape there as they head onto the loose and yes Tom Constantine is now having to defend because Morgan Root the quickest man on that last lap leader throws another face full of dust up towards his two pursuers in their swifts is it going to be enough for Jaden Bennett he's run a bit wide coming into the jump this could be Constantine's opportunity he's having to attack and defend at the same time here they come back onto the tarmac through the little chicane through the marker blocks up towards the left-hander onto the brakes Bennett still leads this is Tom Constantine's last opportunity they're coming through towards the chequered flag this time he's right on Bennett's tail roots on his tail in turn they're going to finish line astern and Bennett's just held it run wide out of the last corner Morgan Root goes off after the chequered flag he nearly hit the back of uh, Tom Constantine there he had to anchor up and slid onto the grass my goodness what a finish and James Constantine coming through for fourth place so the win going to Jaden Bennett by 0.36 of a second over Tom Constantine Morgan Root just six tenths of a second back and James Constantine completing the four finishes Jim, excellent win nice to see you back on uh, the podium again how was that out there this afternoon? Yeah, it's very good, thank you. It's very close between me and Tom. I think it's just all. But yeah, the start was good for me. So I did a very good reaction then, in a way. But I just sort of held it from the start, really. So yeah, happy with that. Excellent. You should have got a few more points for the championship as well yeah. as today. Yeah, it's very close between me and Tom now after my engine blew up in Pembury on the last round. So yeah, see what points are now. Excellent. Well, hopefully you can stay where you are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Next up is the A final for the Kartec Motorsport Production 4x4 category and we have a trio of Subaru Impressors out on track. Two heat wins for Dan Beatty in the red car, while well, the first heat was won by Paul Davis in the blue number 11. It's Beatty who leads into the first corner, a bit of contact behind him there. Paul Davis gets pushed sideways by Liam Manning, the winner earlier this season at Pembrey in the number 24, racing, I think that's his father Mike's car that he's racing today. It's Dan Beatty who leads the way, looking for his first final win this year. Leads through the infield section over the loose for the first time. Has already gone clear due to that near tangle behind him. Bit of damage on the front bumper of Liam Manning's machine. It's over the jump and Dan Beatty leads the way in number 13. Certainly not been unlucky 13 for him so far today with a pair of heat wins. Starting as the favourite going into this uh, A final. There is Liam Manning in the number 24, the Welshman. Has most of his success on his local circuits down at Pembrey. A couple of visits this year by the championship to Pembrey. Of course, the finale coming up in November at Croft in North Yorkshire. And out in front it is Dan Beatty as they complete the first of five laps. Leads by 1.6 seconds ahead of Paul Davis 
in uh, second place in the number 11. Has had a couple of wins this year in his uh, Subaru World Rally Team lookalike at number 11, the older shaped Subaru, the slightly newer version of Dan Beatty it is who leads. One minute three. 0.537 his lap time first time around it's about four or five seconds quicker than the Suzuki's we saw in the juniors where's Paul Davis going he's gone straight on at the right-handed hairpin there just slid wide uh, on the loose it's lost him some ground so everything playing into the hands of Dan Beatty at the moment looking for his uh, first final win of the season he's clear of Davis in second place and young Liam Manning trying to catch up. He won the super final earlier this season at the double header round at Pembrey in uh, his regular Subaru. Normally races a white car in his father Mike's car today. Maybe we'll see Mike back out soon in his uh, supercar spec Ford Puma. Another regular racer at Pembrey for many years and Davies has subst substantially increased his lead now. Three and a half seconds clear of Paul Davies after that slight error midway through the second lap we're on board with Dan Beatty our race leader heading on to the loose section no problems with dust for him because he's well out in front down through the gears into the hairpin flings the Subaru in the boxer engine sounding lovely as it always does on Subarus a sound familiar to rally fans for many many years out of the infield loop over the jump continuing to accelerate clear Dan Beatty looking good for his first final win of the season. He's got two laps to go after this. Down to the far end of the circuit. Paul Davis still in second. The three cars well spaced out now. See that bit of damage to the front bumper on Liam Manning's machine after he clipped uh, Paul Davis soon after the start. Fortunately, both were able to continue in the race. We didn't want uh, Dan Beatty going round by himself. I'm sure Dan didn't want that either. Whether that's caused any damage to the steering on Liam Manning's car, I'm not too sure. Into uh, lap four then, BT leads by over four and a half seconds. Now he gained over a second on that last lap alone. And a further three seconds back is Liam Manning in the uh, number 24. So it looks like it is going to be a win for Dan Beatty. He's just got to take it carefully from here in his uh, candy red liveried car. Dust being kicked up there by Paul Davis in second place. He's uh, made a slight mistake through the hairpin again over the old runways here at the uh, former airfield of Blyton. Over the jump go his pursuers. Beatty is already down at the far end of the circuit, back on the tarmac. Here's Paul Davis in second place. In the blue and yellow livery made, so legendary by Colin McRae. Similar uh, decals on the number 24 car, but in green rather than yellow for Liam Manning, the Welshman. We're on the last lap now of this Cartech Motorsport production 4x4 A final. Here at the penultimate round. Round six of the Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship in partnership with Toyo Tyres. This is going to be a win for Dan Beatty. Although Paul Davis was slightly quicker on that uh, last lap with a 1 minute 4.221. Beatty through the loose section back towards the jump. Davis looks safe in second. That bumper still hanging off the uh, front of Liam Manning's car slightly. So the tarmac the power goes down from the four-wheel drive Subarus. Here comes Dan Beatty coming through for his first win of the season. His first A final win's going to be a hat trick after he won heats two and three. Paul Davis, the winner of heat one, into the final right-hander comes Dan Beatty to take the chequered flag. Dan with a clear victory over. Paul Davis, who comes over in second place, and Liam Manning will complete the three finishers to our Kartec Motorsport production 4x4A final. Even with a loose front bumper, that didn't slow him down. So the win going to Dan Beatty by over five seconds in the end ahead of Paul Davis. Liam Manning completing the three finishers another five seconds back. Dan, your first win, congratulations, you drove really well, there's a big gap between you and the uh, the other two cars in the field, how was that for you? It was alright, it was a bit difficult on the loose, but yeah, it was good for my first first win. Yeah, definitely, you must yeah. be really chuffed, are you? I am, yeah, very chuffed, okay. third out in my first win. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, it's spot on, the car looks like it's been going quite well for all yeah. the meetings we've seen you at. Yeah, yeah, it has been going really well, it hasn't faulted, so I can't complain about that. Brilliant, yeah. well well done, hopefully the same, the same again next time. Yeah, hopefully. Brilliant. Well Thank done. You. Thank you.
Some good action so far then here at Blyton Park. We're now going to move on to the historic category sponsored by Steve Gaunt Trailer Hire. First coming up is their B final, the biggest entry of historics we've had so far in 2017. They had a C final earlier on. This is the B final. We join it with Irishman Noel McMullen making his first appearance in England this year, clear of Nick Potter's Peugeot 106 by just over three and a half seconds. Ian Clark's Mini in third, and a rather wayward David Ewing in his Fiesta in fourth place. He qualified by winning the C final ahead of Adam Haig in his Mini. They're back in fourth and fifth. Mark Griffin in his uh, Mini, another of the classic Minis here today, unfortunately dropped out of this B final on the opening lap. So it's Noel McMullen who leads the way as they come over the jump on lap three of five. Looking good here to qualify for the A final where he'll meet uh, fellow escort pilots in the shape of Brian Hardman and Sean Buckley fighting for the historic championship this year. The others two have qualified Michael Grant's Fiesta and Ryan Stutchbury's Peugeot 205. There's another Peugeot, the newest car in the historic class. That's Nick Potter in the Peugeot 106 GTI. He's well behind McMullen here. The Irishman 3.6 seconds clear at the start of the previous lap. We'll see what the gap is this time. He's understeering a little there as he comes through the first corner down towards the left-handed hairpin. Here's Ian Clark in his Mini. First time we've seen him this year, number 485 in a safe third place. Well, the gap has substantially increased by three seconds there, over six and a half seconds clear now. Noel McMullen. Ian Clark a further seven seconds back in third. They are well spaced out in this B final for the Steve Gaunt trailer hire historics to go through to the A final, just as they did from the C final to the B. David Ewing and Adam Hay qualified through. Great to see so many of these uh, older machines celebrating the great days of Rallycross back in the 80s and 90s. Well, and continues to lead the way. David Ewan is catching Ian Clark for third place. The blue Fiesta we caught a glimpse of earlier. Well, and flicking the escort sideways. That's what Mark uh, two escorts were designed for, really. Sideways action like that. There's Ian Clark in third. See David Ewan there in the background, the uh, North Yorkshire farmer in his Fiesta. Looked a couple of uh, Fiestas of that certain similar age. Appeared in the super modified division in the past with his uh, more modified Fiesta. is heading for the A final, he's on his last lap now, 7.7 .7 seconds, he gained over a further second on Nick Potter that time around, Adam Haig at the back in his uh, mini, he's over the jump for the last time, comes Norman Mullen at 105.423 his last uh, lap time, so only a couple of seconds off the uh, Subarus we've seen in the production 4x4 division, Nick Potter in a safe second place, they are heading into the A final, up towards the last corner, Noel McMullen takes the chequered flag and qualifies through the Irishman to the A final, Nick Potter coming in for second place in his Peugeot 106, swings it through the last corner, takes the flag, it's going to be Ian Clark a long way back in his mini in third, David Ewing has closed him down though, as they come up towards the last couple of corners, David Ewing uh, running wide onto the grass there, pushing hard as always, always a flamboyant racer Here's uh, David, up towards the last corner then, Ian Clark will come in for third place, and David Ewing fourth overshoots the last corner out onto the gravel, just about gets the car stopped to head back into the paddock. So that's a win for Noel McMullen by 9.3 seconds in the end over Nick Potter, with Ian Clark well back in third. Ewing and Haig fourth and fifth, Mark Griffin a non-finisher. Moving on then to the A final of Historics, and it's our usual pair of battlers up front. It's Brian Hardman in the yellow escort at number seven, leading the way ahead of Sean Buckley in uh, number three. Oh, Buckley in trouble there, coming into the jump. He's lost it. He takes down the marker poles, and I, th I think he's beached himself there on the jump. And the uh, pursuers lucky to miss him there in the dust cloud. So Sean Buckley stuck there, the Welshman on the jump. The red flag is coming out. And that, I think, is the end of uh, the reigning champion's race. Uh, Sean Buckley, I don't think he's going to be out for the restart. See it again here. He just got sideways coming into the jump, overcorrected, and off went the number three escort. The Fiesta of Michael Grant getting through there into second place. 
Just gave it too much power, I think. Got sideways coming out of the left-hander there. Straight across the front. Michael Grant was lucky to miss him there because he wouldn't have seen him in that uh, big dust cloud thrown up by the uh, number three car. And Sean Buckley is indeed out of the restart. That'll put a big dent in his championship hopes. He had a heat win earlier on. So did Michael Grant. So did Brian Hartman, who's alone at the front of the grid in the yellow escort for the restart of this Steve Gordon trailer hire historic Class A final. Brian Hartman leads them off then in the yellow escorts. Michael Grant's Fiesta second. Noel McMullen, our B final winner with a good start in his escort. Oh, he's lost it at the first left-hander. Spins down to fifth place. Up to third goes Ryan Stutchbury in the green Peugeot 205. And then we've got Nick Potter in the Peugeot 106. It's Brian Hardman, who was the overall BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross points leader coming into this round ahead of production runner Jeff Hope Davies. Brian Hardman looking to win the overall award this year. Leads the way in his escorts. He and Sean Buckley have dominated the historic category this year between them. But so Michael Grant's giving him a run for his money here in the Mark II Fiesta. Had a heat win earlier on, as we said. Brian Hardman won heat three, Grant's heat two. It was Buckley who won heat one. A man from North Wales out of this one, though, after his uh, mishap in the first running. First two have pulled clear. Grant out over the kerbs onto the dirt there. Almost onto two wheels, the uh, Fiesta. As we go into the second lap. Lead is 1.4 seconds for Hardman over Grant. Then Stutchbury a further three and a half seconds back in third place ahead of Potter and uh, McMullen. And runs wide, he's off again at the first corner. Great shame for Noel McMullen, I'm sure uh, without that miss, that couple of mishaps, he'd be up there challenging the other escorts at the front of the field. Ryan Stutchbury in third place in the uh, Peugeot 205. As they head back towards the tarmac section, then over the jump. Ryan Harvard already through towards the chicane. Leads Michael Grant in the number 11 Ford Fiesta there with the escorts all the way through this season running wide there through the left-hander onto the grass Stutchbury a much cleaner exit in the RS Motorsports uh, Peugeot, the bright green machine seen Scott Stutchbury out in one of those earlier this season as well the identical 205s he looks safe in uh, third place in the Peugeot but it's the escort out in front Brian Hartman heading for another success here surely now he's pulled clear of Grant's two and a half seconds up as the Fiesta runs wide. Meantime, Noel McMuddle on a recovery drive has caught his uh, B-final rival, Nick Potter. The two qualifiers up from the B-final having their own battle at the back. Through the uh, dusty infield section they come. Still out front is Hardman. Nick Potter has almost been caught now by Noel McMullen in the more powerful Ford Escort Mark II. Into the right-hand hairpin, Potter goes a bit wide. Again, McMullen gets two sideways there, loses drive, loses momentum. He stays in fifth place. The Grant Auto Services Fiesta of Michael Grant in second place. Let's see what the gap is this time to the escort up front of Brian Harper coming through to start lap number four. Stutchbury still on his own in third place in this Steve Gaunt trailer's historic A final. Sun beginning to set here in Lincolnshire. The top two, Stutchbury, onto his fourth lap. Here's the battle for fourth place. Potter under fire from McMullen. Escorts to the inside. Seems much stronger on the tarmac as McMullen, and he goes through into fourth place. The lead is up to 3.6 seconds. They're seven seconds clear of Stutchbury now. Then this this pair battling at the back. McMullen now up into fourth position and pulling away from the Peugeot 106 of Nick Potter. Ryan Hardman over the jump for the fourth time in this five-lap race. Doesn't need to push on. He's not under pressure, just needs to take it steadily here. He knows he can take another A-final win to try and keep his overall lead in the BTRDA Autosport International Clubman's Rallycross standings. Michael Grant in second in the Fiesta. Into the last lap we go then here at Blyton. There is McMullen in fourth place. I don't think he's going to catch Ryan Stutchbury for a podium. Flicks the tail out again on the Mark II Escort. That's what Mark II Escorts were designed for, really, sideways action like that. No uh, tail happy uh, celebrating just yet from Brian Hardman. Just keeping his nose clean to the finish. Re 
3.2 seconds now the lead, so Grant has closed up very slightly on the Escort. Yes, he is closing in, so Brian Hardman doesn't need to get complacent here. Through towards the jump for the last time, over the bump on the inside, then up over the top. And down towards the, I was going to say back straight, but it's not particularly straight because you go into the chicane. Then down towards the left-hander. Grant has closed up. I don't think he's going to get there, though. I think he's going to run out of time to uh, make a move on Brian Hardman. They're coming up towards the last corner now, and it's going to be another historic A final win for Brian Hardman ahead of Michael Grant, and they're well clear of their opposition. Here comes Ryan Stutchbury in the Peugeot for third position. Fourth place will be our B final winner, Noel McMullen, and Nick Potter in the Peugeot 106 will take fifth, but... Uh, that will be a big boost to Brian Hardman with Sean Buckley not finishing the A-final. That will really help his championship challenge. So five cars go the distance in our A-final. Hardman the winner by 1.8 seconds. So Michael Grant half the gap on that last uh, couple of laps. Ryan Stutchbury some 12 seconds back in third ahead of McMullen and Potter Buckley the non-finisher. Ryan, this is getting to be a bit of a regular occurrence, me and you having these interviews. <laughs> you didn't keep winning. I didn't think I'd win today. <laughs> I really didn't think I'd win today. I mean, Mike Grant in the Fiesta and Sean pushed me all the way. In, fa in the final, uh, Sean was pushing me so hard, I think he's gone off because of it. But Yeah, we saw hard. him spin. It's always a it bit of a battle between the you last two. Heat. I got the fastest yeah. time of the day and that gave me pole position, which is the best place to be on this track. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult to overtake if you put the car in the right place. Um, just ecstatic with it, yeah. Really made up. Yeah. Well done, and we'll see you in the next round. Yeah, Same again. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I need it to stay dry though as well. But <laughs> fingers crossed for you. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Then. Thank you. More great rally cross action coming up here at Blyton after this short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to Blyton Park here at round six of the Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship. Now it's time for the Mel Williams Tyres production category. This is the B final on pole position. Joe Meskowskis, the Lithuanian driver in his Citroen C2. And alongside him, Lee Hickey in his Peugeot 205. Away we go for five laps. Good start by Sue Lane in her Honda Civic, the winner of the C final. Top two finishes in this race qualify through to the A final to meet the top qualifiers. Joe Meskowskis leads Peter Hamlet in his Peugeot 306 with a good start. The white car at the inside there, challenging Lee Hickey. In behind them, Dan Flickcroft in the green Citroen C2 of Meskowskis with a perfect start, and he leads into the first of five laps. Hamlet is up into second place in the Peugeot 306. Side by side for third, Flickcroft up there with the 205 of Hickey at the back there, Martin Rogers in his Hyundai Coupe. He was the second qualifier from the C final. Huge entry of production class cars today. Sue Lane has a stab at getting through for third there. Didn't quite make it work. Stays behind Dan Flickcroft. Trim hanging loose there from the Honda Civic as a result of that. Now towards the completion of lap number one. Then Sue Lane running a bit wide onto the grass. Collected a bit of marker tape there. It must have run wide coming into the jump. Joe Miskowskis leads Hamlet in second in the 306. First time we've seen that car this year. Flickcroft in third. And there's the tape adorned Honda Civic of Sue Lane. Into the second lap we go then. The lead is just over two seconds for Joe Miskowskis ahead of Peter Hamlet. It's a battle at the back between Lee Hickey and Martin Rogers. The Peugeot 205 ahead of the Hyundai Coupe. A couple of coupes we've seen in the series this year. Plenty of Citroëns as well. Citroën Saxo is the most popular choice as Peter Hamlet runs wide there. He's overshot the hairpin. This could allow Dan Flickcroft to challenge for second place and try and get a place at the back of the A final grid. Up and over the jump they come. They're side by side for second. And Hamlet just about holds the place, clips a cone on the exit as they head down onto the tarmac. Sue Lane's in behind them as well. Good fight developing here for second and third. Further back, Hickey ahead of Rogers in the battle for fifth position. Joe Miskowskis thinks, well, the harder they battle with each other, the more I can build my lead. He's heading for the A final. Into his third lap now. It's a bit wide out of the uh, left-hander there. Leads by two seconds ahead of Flickcroft and Hamlet. Hamlet in second place in the Peugeot. 
It's Flincroft in the Citroen. And the main in the Honda Civic behind them. Three cars line astern for second place. And losing time all the time to Joe Meskowskis. Gets it nice and steady into the right-handed head with the Liqui Moly sponsored Citroen. Peter Hamlet again running a little wide through the hairpin. It's close for second, and all over the back of him here is Dan Flickcroft. Has a look up the inside, has a lunge coming into the left-hander before the jump. Has Hamlet gone off there in the dust? No, he's still going, but he ran wide and is down to third place. That's a brave move by Dan Flickcroft to dive through into second place. We don't very often see passes there at the jump. I thought uh, Peter Hamlet had gone straight on and gone off into the rough like uh, Sean Buckley did earlier on in the historics. He's lost ground there to our new second place man. Out in front is still Joe Meskowskis. There is Martin Rogers at the back in his Hyundai Coupe. Here is Meskowskis now into his fourth lap. He's looking good for an A final place. Looks like it is going to be two Citroen C2s who go through. The lead is now nearly three and a half seconds for Meskowskis after that little battle for second. And Peter Hamlin's fight back in the Peugeot 306. Meskowskis flicks his way through the hairpin. There's Sue Lane in fourth place, dropping back now in her Honda Civic. Plenty of dust being kicked up there by Peter Hamlet into the hairpin. Track uh, cutting up a little there now. Down the back straight goes Meskowskis into the chicane. Flag of Lithuania displayed on the side of his car. Rally cross and rallying, very popular in the Baltic states and in the increasingly in Eastern Europe. We've seen a few Latvian drivers taking part, including in the World Rallycross Championship. There is Sue Lane, one of a couple of uh, female competitors we've seen in the uh, BTRDA Clubman Series this year. Jordine Munch being uh, another. We've seen her out in a Citroen C2 this year. Similar to the car that we uh, see leading this race. That's a Joe Miskowskis into the final lap now. 3.6 seconds the lead. Hamlet's uh, nearly four seconds further back in third and coming under pressure from Sue Lane. Towards the infield section, here comes Joe Miskowskis. Nice little uh, Scandinavian flick on his way in there. Well, I should say it's a Baltic flick for the uh, Lithuanian. Dan Flickcroft still in second place. I don't think Peter Hamlet's going to get close enough. Again, he uh, overshoots the hairpin slightly. He's pushing a bit too hard in the... 306 under pressure from Sue Lane and Lee Hickey's closed up on these two as well in the Peugeot 205 we saw there. Nice variety of cars in this one, but it's mainly Citroen Saxos in the A final. They'll be joined by a pair of C2s. And 306 is uh, not going to get there, nor is the Honda by the look of things, because there's the chequered flag and Joe Miskowskis takes the win ahead of uh, Dan Flickcroft in second place in the green C2. Peter Hamlet holds on for third place ahead of Sue Lane. Lee Hickey will come home in fifth place in his Peugeot 205, the oldest car in the race. And Martin Rogers will complete the finishers in the Hyundai Coupe at the back. So all six cars go the distance in our B final for the Mel Williams Tyres production category. Miskowskis the winner by five and a half seconds ahead of Flickcroft with Hamlet three seconds back in third, ahead of Lane, Hickey and Rogers completing the top six. Now on to the A final, Richard Todd in pole position alongside Jeff Hope Davies. Jeff Hope Davies, the Welshman, the championship leader, won two heats. Richard Todd won one down towards the first corner they charge. This will be a five lap race, already bits of bodywork flying. It's Hope Davies who leads. Oh, we've got a collision. Round goes Graham Rumsey and he's been clobbered by Thomas Choynaski in the white and black Saxo. So a bit of chaos there on the first corner. They've all managed to keep going though. That's put Miskowskis through into third place from the back. It's Jeff Hope Davies who leads the way from a rather sideways Richard Todd in his uh, Peugeot 106. What a lively start to this A final. Jeff Hope Davies leads the way. The current uh, Mel Williams tyres production class points leader. Up and over the jump he comes. Trying to challenge Brian Hardman from the historics for the overall BTRDA points lead. Todd in second, Miskowskis third, Flintcroft is up to fourth, and then we've got the rather battered car of Graham Rumsey in fifth position, trying to go through, he does go through, coming out of the chicane, up into fourth place, that was a rather kamikaze first corner from uh, Graham Rumsey, just charged through the middle of everybody, sent a couple of cars skittling, 
including Thomas Chojnaski, the Polish driver in the white and black number 311 car. And Brumsy back up into fourth place as they start the second lap. It looks as though Thomas Chojnaski has pulled up at the back. He's got some damage as a result of that. The lead is 1.6 seconds for Jeff Hope Davies over Richard Todd, being reeled in by Joe Miskauskas in the C2. Runs a bit wide there through the second corner. And onto the loose stake up. Citroen's first, third and fourth, and indeed fifth. It's the Peugeot breaking their dominance. The only non-Citroen, in fact, in this A-final is Richard Todd's Peugeot 106. And Dan Flickcroft uh, slowing up there at the back. Has he uh, hit trouble? No, he's clipped uh, a cone there on the inside. He's clipped one of the marker blocks. Thought he'd uh, come to a dead stop there, but he has clipped one of the markers, able to get going again. Just took the hairpin a bit too fine. Jeff Hope Davies still leads from Richard Todd, Joe Meskowskis in third place, they head round towards the end of the second lap, there's Thomas Choynaski, he is out of the race, he's pulled up towards the end of lap one as Graham Rumsey hits a cone, coming through the left-hander there, Graham Rumsey not only clipping other cars in this one, but clipping the scenery as well, he's dropped back into fourth now, not under threat from Dan Flickcroft, because he made a mistake at the hairpin second time around. Hope Davies continues to lead, and he's uh, doubled his lead this time through. 3.2 seconds up on Richard Todd, who's being reeled in by Miskowskis. Eight uh, tenths of a second between those two. Graham Rumsey a further four seconds back in his sack, so Flickcroft having lost some seven seconds in his delay at the hairpin. Looks like the marshals have removed the uh, offending marker block and cone there that was dislodged by Dan Flickcroft last time through. Well done to the very efficient uh, marshals here at Blyton. Couldn't go racing without them. Jeff Hope Davis leads this third lap of this Mel Williams Tyres production A final. Miskowska still chasing Richard Todd in the Peugeot for second place. Flag of Lithuania proudly displayed on the uh, window of his car. To the right hand towards the end of the lap. I think the lead gap has come down a little. This time we shall see on the timing as they come through to start their fourth lap. Hope Davies continues to lead and towards the first corner here at Blyton Park, driving centre. It's Graham Rumsey in fourth place. Yes, the lead gap down to 1.7 seconds now, so they are closing on Jeff Hope Davies for the lead. Skowskis dropped a bit of time on that uh, previous lap. Richard Todd. Could he catch Jeff Hope Davies for what I think will be his second day final win of the season? Swing their way through the infield up towards the jump. Over the top go the leaders. Jeff Hope Davies getting his foot down, trying to pull away again. He is pulling away again from Richard Todd. Fourth is still Rumsey ahead of Flickcroft. Thomas Choynaski from the UK Poland Rallycross team out of the race of the action from down there at the far end of the circuit. That completes their fourth lap. Hope Davies still leads. There is Dan Flickcroft at the back in his C2. Sporting Peugeot 205 GTI at wheels there. They're into the last lap of this Mel Williams Tyres production A final. The lead's back up to three and a half seconds, so Hope Davies able to pull away on the previous lap. And uh, Miskowskis now menacing Todd for second place again. Not close enough yet to make a move, though. Not too often we see a B final winner get onto the A final podium. But Miskowskis' luck was in. He was able to avoid that melee on the first corner when Graham Rumsey cannoned into Thomas Choynaski nearly took uh, Richard Todd out as well and was able to get through into third place. It's going to be a win for Jeff Hope Davies. They're not going to catch the Welshman. Round the last couple of corners he comes. He will extend his lead in the overall uh, Mel Williams Tyres production class standings and try and close on Brian Hardman at the top of the overall standings. There's the check and flag. Hope Davies wins it. Todd in second. Third will go to Joe Meskowskis rather battered car of Graham Rumsey and the door stoved in there by that contact with Choynaski comes in in fourth place the other finisher will be Daniel Flickcroft in the green Citroen C2 that concludes the production category A final then the win going to Jeff Hope Davies by 3.3 seconds ahead of Richard Todd Meskowskis a couple of seconds back in third and Graham Rumsey dropping back into fourth ahead of Flickcroft Choynaski a non-finisher
Jeff, it was quite a close field to begin with at the, the start of that A final. You managed to get through. Yeah, yeah. Um, led off the start and uh, just got around that first bend and then just got my head down then. Got out of the way. Yeah. Brilliant. Richard started catching me a little bit at the start of the race and uh, then I managed you know, just to pull away and that was it really. Yeah. Well, you held a good gap after you managed to get away from the crowd a bit, so you must have had the speed there. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a bit dusty back. So like yeah. they were struggling, the track got really rough then at the end, so yeah. it's quite I think rough. It was quite hard to, for everyone to see with all the dust on the gravel. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So we'll see you again in the last round at Croft? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Cheers. See you there. Thanks. Well done to Jeff Hope Davies. Now we move on to the Fuchs Lubricants Super Modified category, a very large entry for them here today. We begin with their B final, a very varied grid out for this one. Heading on to the grid now. In pole position, we have Mike Dresser in the yellow Lotus Exige, David Attiwell in his Vauxhall Nova alongside him, Gary Mitchell in the Ford Puma, Connor Hook in the Ford KA, and David Ewan in his Fiesta, doubling up today, also racing in the historic category. And Mike Dresser in the Lotus surges off the line. Those Lotus Exiges, quite popular in Rallycross these days, and they are so fast off the line. Mike Dresser already starting to disappear at the head of the pack. David Attiwell in the Nova in second place as they head onto the loose for the first time. It's Gary Mitchell third in the Ford Puma, ahead of Connor Hook in his uh, little Ford K8. And another Ford at the back, that's David Ewan, the North Yorkshire farmer in his uh, Ford Fiesta. Up towards the jump, Attiwell trying to make a move here, side by side, the Lotus not as uh, strong on the loose section, but on the tarmac in a straight line, it will simply rocket clear of everything else as it is doing there down the back straight for the first time. Into the left-hander there, it's Mike Dresser, Rallycross veteran who holds his lead. Seen a number of titles won by Lotus Exeges in the last few years, not just by Dresser, by Ashley Simpson and also by the Bellaby clan as well. There's Gary Mitchell third, Connor Hook in fourth place, only a couple of years into his Rallycross career. Trying to make a move for third here, down towards the first corner. He's got the inside line and will go through into third ahead of Gary Mitchell. So the lead was half a second for Mike Presser over David Attiwell. Lotus not as strong as the Nova on the loose infield section as we will see here. Quite spectacular looking aerodynamic appendages on the Exige. David Attiwell's Nova behind him and Connor hooks up with them now as well in the Ford KA. He's going well. Don't forget only the top two qualify for the back of the grid for the A final. At the moment it's Dresser and Attiwell holding the vital places. They avoid those blocks down the back straight. Towards the left-hander coming towards the end of their second of five laps. Connor Hook quickest on the first lap. 1 minute 4.607. Right up with David Attiwell's sky blue Nova now. Places Gary Mitchell with his Ford Puma. David Ewan has dropped back slightly in the Fiesta into fifth, as we said, also racing in the historic category here at Brighton today. That's in front, then, is still Mike Dresser. The Lotus is straight line speed. You can see how quickly it's carrying in clear of David Attiwell. One second the advantage at the end of lap two. Connor Hooker further 1.3 seconds back in third place. This is where Attiwell can make ground over stronger over the dirt section. Tentatively through the hairpin there, Connor Hook throws the Ford KA through. Doing well to keep up with the two leaders here. Up and over the top they go. Still Mike Dresser with the lead, Attiwell with a 1 minute 3.964 to close the gap slightly on that uh, previous lap. It's the Nova a little sideways there into the uh, left-hander. Going round to complete lap number, two, lap number three then. Dresser with the lead, looking to join the back of the A-final grid, and if he gets onto that grid, well, it won't stay at the back very long, this Lotus. He'll try and uh, zip down the outside of the rest of the pack as they head towards the first corner. Could we see a surprise here? I don't think we've uh, seen this year a B-final winner go on to win the A-final. Could we see it here from Mike Dresser? I wonder if it's a very good chance if he gets through. He's got a couple of laps to negotiate before the chequered flag, though. David Attiwell not giving him any rest at all in this uh, Fuchs Lubricants super modified category B final. Just being kicked up there by Connor Hook in third place. 
ahead of Gary Mitchell up towards the jump and Atiwell is still right on the tail of the Lotus here getting a face full of dust as they head over the jump Atiwell just uh, keeping calm here not making any rash moves he knows certain sections of the uh, track the Nova is stronger he is trying to make a move now as they come towards the last corner this is a good run by David Atiwell in his Vauxhall Nova Again, he can't quite make a move on Mike Gresser. They're coming into the start of the final lap. As they come onto the straight here, Mike Gresser will just put his foot down and watch that Lotus surge clear of the Nova. It is so fast, this car, in a straight line. There he goes, pulling away once again. He's left the Nova behind. That is his advantage. Coming through to where the Nova is stronger again, though, the infield. Up towards the loose section. Surprised those uh, front uh, wings aren't being damaged on the Lotus over the bumps here. He leads into the hairpin for the final time. And oh, the Lotus is slowing up. He's in trouble, Mike Dresser. He slows up there. Atiwells goes through and uh, off goes Connor Hook. He's gone straight on in the Ford KA. So it's Atiwell with a clear lead. Gary Mitchell is going to come through in a second. Dresser's come to a halt. There's something wrong with the Lotus. What a shame for Mike Dresser. Looks like he's out of the race. So a dramatic change in the order then, David Atterwell on his own at the front now, he was right to just uh, keep calm and hang on in second place, he's going through to the A final, it's going to be Gary Mitchell who will join him, he was fourth at the start of this lap in the Puma, Atterwell takes the win, Gary Mitchell in the Ford Puma second after Connor Hook went straight on on the infield section, he has recovered, he's still going, Mitchell goes through in second place and here's a doubtlessly annoyed Connor Hook he was all set to inherit second place there, but made a mess of the hairpin, went straight on it almost into the blocks. He takes third, and David Ewan will be the other finisher at the back in his Ford Fiesta. So the win goes to David Atterwell by over seven seconds ahead of Gary Mitchell, Connor Hook third ahead of David Ewan, and the unlucky Mike Dresser sadly dropping out with about half a lap to run. On to the A final then for the Fuchs Lubricants Super Modified. Two heat wins for Alan Tapscott in his Vauxhall Corsa rear wheel drive. The other heat won by Phil Chicken in the Citroen C2. They form the front row and it's Tapscott who launches off the line in the rear wheel drive Corsa into the lead. Mark Jones disputing third place with Paul Johnson in the BMW. But it's Tapscott who leads from Chicken side by side for third between the BMW of Johnson, Mark Jones in the Toyota MR2 and then our 2 B final qualifiers behind them into the sunset they race then Alan Tapscott in the Vauxhall Corsa leads it double heat winner starting as the favourite for his second round win of the year Gary Mitchell a bit tentative there at the back through the hairpin it's Tapscott who leads the way gets very sideways over the jump this is Phil Chicken's opportunity to get up the inside try and take lead oh they've collided down the back straight and into a marker goes uh, Phil Chicken he's off into the field Tapscott spins he's been hit by Johnson in the BMW mayhem there on the back straight. Oh my goodness me. So Paul Johnson has taken the lead as a result of that in the BMW 3 Series. Ahead of, but we've got a red flag. The red flag is out. So let's see what happened there. Alan Tapscott got sideways over the jump. Phil Chicken tried to get through, but they bounced off each other. Chicken went off into the uh, marker there on the back straight. He went off into the cloud field. See, Tapscott tried to put the power down, but the rear wheel drive got him sideways. They just rubbed together down the back straight, off into that uh, marker bale on the far side, into the field, and then Tapscott spun. And I don't know how Paul Johnson missed uh, piling straight into the side of him there, just clipped him. So ready for a rerun then. All six cars back out there, and again it's Tapscott who gets the best start. Second place is Phil Chicken, and this time Mark Jones up into third place, the Welshman in the Marks Motors MR2. Paul Johnson fourth, David Atterwell fifth, and Gary Mitchell in sixth place. A very varied field here indeed. And who knows what would have happened if Mike Dresser had got through in the Lotus. Such a fast car off the line. Chicken again, again challenging our leader, Alan Tapscott. They've already collided once. Sending Phil Chicken into that uh, marker bale on the back straight. He was lucky not to pick up uh, some more serious damage to his Citroen C2. Both of these two are rallycross veterans. It's Tapscott in the Corsa, the man from Devon who leads the way. Chicken in second. Paul Johnson holding off Mark Jones' MR2 for third. He's got through there in the uh, infield section. Thomas Choi Nashke Saxo still uh, stranded there on the outside from the Bell Williams Tires production category. To be recovered at the end of the day. Chicken runs wide as they go 
into the second lap. The lead is just two tenths of a second. So perhaps our closest lead battle so far today. One tap Scott's course of the AT Motors car continues to lead this A final. Johnson third ahead of Jones, Atiwell and Mitchell. 14 seconds covers the field in the sunset here at Blyton Park. Phil Chicken trying to challenge for the lead. Not close enough to make a move at that hairpin this time. And it's out towards the jump. Johnson's big BMW. Doesn't look like a rallycross car, but still very effective. Chicken tries to pull alongside Alan Tapscott. A lot of experience, Alan Tapscott, this rear-wheel drive Corsa. A very effective car, leads into the left-hander. Coming round towards the completion of their second lap. Thomas Choynashki probably just enjoying the sunset there as he waits for his car to be recovered at the end of the meeting. Broke down in the production category after some contact. Johnson and Jones third and fourth. Here's the battle for fifth between Atiwell in the Nova, Mitchell in the Gearbox sponsored Puma. Fighting for fifth position, qualified from the B final, these two, of course. To their third lap, they go. Still tap Scott, who leads the way. Just three tenths of a second is lead margin. Clips a cone there as he comes onto the loose infield section. Chicken right behind him now, has a look at the inside. Almost clips the back of the course, so they're right together now as they come through the infield section. Paul Johnson's big BMW is still in third place. Again, Tapscott a little sideways. So much power being fed to the rear wheels of that course. A chicken up alongside again. They're leaning on each other again as they go down the back straight. Garoff says Alan Tapscott and continues to hold his lead, but he's under real pressure here from Phil Chicken. The best lead battle we've had so far today. These drivers really saving the best for last here at Blyton Park. Coming through to the completion of lap number three, Tapscott's a little sideways in the Corsa, leads the Citroen C2 across the timing line to start their fourth lap. Bill Chicken all over the back of him. This is terrific stuff between these two, but again, the Corsa's power telling in a straight line. Johnson still third ahead of Mark Jones in the black and green MR2. Into the dust cloud, they head then over the infield. Still Alan Tapscott with the lead. He's pulled a couple of car lengths advantage out over Phil Chicken here, they come down to the hairpin, Chicken's right up with him again, moves to the inside, there's contact, he hits the front wheel of the Corsa, Tapscott comes to a dead stop, has that put Alan Tapscott out of the race? No, he's getting going again. Now is there damage to Chicken's car there? I don't think so, I think they've got away with that, but Chicken now leads, dove down the inside into the hairpin, clipped the front wheel of Tapscott's Corsa, I think he stalled, trying to get going again there, Tapscott, he's a long way back now, and in the clutches of... Paul Johnson's BMW. A bit of damage there from when he clipped the spinning Tapscott in the first running of this race. So Tapscott's taken a fair bit of punishment here, but he'll battle on. It looks like it is going to be a win for Phil Chicken. He leads by a, by a clear margin now into the final lap ahead of the battle for second. There's Mark Jones in third, in fourth, I should say, in the MR2. Tapscott holding second from Paul Johnson in the BMW like the Corsa has escaped without any major damage there after that contact at the hairpin. Holding off Johnson for second place now. It's Phil Chicken with a clear lead in the Citroen C2. Looking to have the bodywork pushed onto the tyre there in that contact when he dove down the inside into the hairpin. Johnson trying to do the same thing. And this time he hits uh, Tapscott and spins the Corsa around. That Corsa's got a big target painted on it, I reckon. He's been hit three times now in this one. Spins down to, uh, it'll be uh, third place, because he's rejoined ahead of Mark Jones in the MR2. It's Paul Johnson now through to second. I think Gary Mitchell's got a front puncture, the way he's running wide there. Look at the state of Paul Johnson's BMW after that uh, contact now. Phil Chicken's coming through to take the win in this chaotic uh, super modified A final. Chicken the winner, and Tapscott's off again. Goodness me, what has happened to Alan Tapscott here? Paul Johnson in the remains of his BMW comes in in second. It's going to be Mark Jones in third place. What a mayhem-filled race. A very fed-up Alan Tapscott rejoins. He will finish in last place, having led for most of the way. Dear, oh dear. Poor old Alan Tapscott was hit from every side in that one, I think. Gary Mitchell comes over in fifth behind David Atterwell. And Alan Tapscott is going to make it just about to the finish line. What a chaotic race. Well, Alan Tapscott there was set to hang on for third place, but then he locked up coming into the hairpin. He spun around 
and uh, Mark Jones able to get through for third as he went out onto the grass. Chicken the winner meantime by nearly 10 seconds ahead of Paul Johnson in the end. Jones third ahead of Atterwell. Gary Mitchell taking fifth and a very fed up Alan Tapscott completing the finishes. Phil. <laughs> You got your breath back now. <laughs> that was a close race. <laughs> what was happening out there with you and Tapscott? Just, just like Alan and I want to use the same bit of tarmac, I think. And, and we, I think you did at one point. <laughs> I think we did. I we both used the same bit at the same time. Mm -hmm. But no, we. Uh, I was talking to Alan before before the start, and he's like, "Remember, it's only, it's only for class points. You don't have to go out, and you're only in a little 1600. You've, you know, you've got your class all the rest of it." Yeah, Alan, right, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're out that win. You're out that win, we yeah. can see that. But yeah. it looked really entertaining. You looked oh, like you were having yeah. a good time was as well. Good, uh, you know, a little bit of push and shoving, but Alan went wide round the corner and that was it. I yeah. was through and that was it. I yeah. was gone. Brilliant. So, and then yeah. you just flew to the finish. <laughs> Easy as that, eh? <laughs> went round, went round about it. No, it's not the flag out. I haven't put the flag out yet. Oh, no, I've got to do this, Alan, again. Where is he looking at me, Mirrors? Yeah, but no. Brilliant. Good, that was really time. entertaining. Well done. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. very much. No worries. Let's have a look at the points table then, combining all classes and with points and a half available from this round. It is still historic leader Brian Hardman on top, but only six points ahead of production top man Jeff Hope Davies with Phil Chicken a further 14 points back. He leads the super modified category. So it's going to be close with double points on offer in the final round of the year at Croft. So that's about all from here at uh, Blyton Park. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the action. Do join us for the final round of the year from Croft in North Yorkshire of the BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship. Once again, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.